it, so it's not super heavy duty, but I can still hit with a good amount of force without having to worry about hitting myself. Cool part about this is it also has a little lip here, so I don't even have to worry about sliding, so I don't actually have to put my thumb here on the end of this. But again, one of the best parts about this is that I Hey, what's up guys? So I'm going to talk to you today about a few techniques, hand techniques that we do in Taekwondo, and I want to show you how you can use a force multiplier to be better in a self-defense situation, right? And I'm going to show you a few of my favorite ones that are mostly non-lethal, okay? So we're going to we're going to stick to that for today. So the two main techniques that I'm going to show, and there's obviously lots of variations in how you can do these, but the first one is going to be the hammer fist, right? So I can do a forward hammer fist, I can do a backhand hammer fist, I can go straight, I can do it like a jab almost, where I'm coming here using a lot of triceps and extension. Ideally when I'm doing these, especially the forward and the backward, even the straight forward one, I want to be using my hips as I turn in all of these, right? So make sure that you're using your entire body, you're not just doing this. The jab version is a little bit more snappy, so that one doesn't quite use all your body, but you can still get a little bit of a hip into that one as you do it as well. So keep that in mind. Whenever you're doing hand techniques, you are still going to be using your lower body. And then the second one is going to be our ridge hand strike, whether it's the front or the back. All right, so these are Especially the ridge hand is usually pretty overlooked, but I'm going to show you how to add something to it. So the first thing I'm going to show you is just a training tool that I like to use to help add to this. And this is just a palm stick, right? It's a little stick, right? Mine's smooth, so I don't hurt my hand. But what's great about these is that you can hold them and you can pick up anything that's like this and ridge hand, right? And you're having that force multiplier. So now I'm not worried about really breaking my hand as I strike, as I have something to hit. This is cool because I have something on both ends. You're not always gonna have that. Sometimes you have something that's longer on one end and it just won't pop out on both ends. So if you are doing that, that's fine. Just be aware of, I don't want to hold it like this where I'm just gonna hit here anyways. That kind of defeats the purpose of the force multiplier, right? So hold it in a way that you're going to be hitting with whatever your weapon is. If you are doing the hammer fist version, I usually do recommend putting your thumb on the end of it just to provide or prevent it from slipping out as you make contact. Uh, on the other one, you don't really have that option. I don't recommend putting your pinky over the end of it. It's just going to hurt you. So just hold it with a good grip. But again, you can do these same strikes. So I have the forehand hammer fist, the backhand hammer fist, straight hammer fist, and I can do a jab with the hammer fist. You can also do that. It's like a hook, right? The ridge hand using that. All right, so I like to use these just to help train on actually striking something. It's good to actually practice hitting something with these because the first time you hit something, if you don't have that tight grip, it can pop out of your hand. And that's not something you want. So make sure that you do practice actually striking with whatever it is. All right, so that's one thing. The next is just something like a tactical pin. This is actually isn't a tactical pin, but it's metal, so it works as a tactical pin, right? Same concepts apply. Uh, on these, I usually don't recommend the ridge hand as much because it's a smaller diameter. It's more likely to slip out and you're gonna be impacting with uh, this part of your hand anyways. But these are really good for putting your thumb over the end of it. And again, force multiplier. If you have something small, if it's not meant to be a tactical pin, if it's just a pin, then you're gonna be aiming for soft tissue areas. If it's a tactical pin, usually those are a little bit thicker uh, and then they're also going to be harder and you can hit those on more of a skull hard surface area targets. But if it's not, then you can just aim for like, things like in between the clavicle right here. That's a good spot for it. On the neck's always a really good spot. Even just anywhere in the chest region, pecs, something like that, it can <laughs> provide a lot of pain. Um, if it's a really bad situation, obviously you can aim for the eyes, but that's it's one of the last resorts. All right, so that gold pen is one. Uh, this one is a lethal, non-lethal option, right? So I've got a knife, right? Actual knife. But if you want to, you can hold it the same way and do these same strikes with just holding onto the knife. 
Now this is a non-lethal option here, but it can become a lethal option if it opens up. Now, one of the big things that I want to really point out with this is this is more of a last resort type thing where you really don't want to hurt them, uh, but or you don't want to kill them, but you have to hurt them and you really need the force multiplier. Ideally, you don't bring these out just for any confrontation because if it falls out of your hand, now your opponent might have a weapon and that's the last thing that you want. So this is one of the last options. I don't, I do not usually recommend actually pulling it out, but it is an option to have a stronger strike uh, if you are in a situation where you need it without going completely towards the lethal. Most people, if they have a knife, they automatically just draw it and present the blade. You don't actually have to do that. Although sometimes presenting the blade will get your opponent to just back away anyways, and that's a good option if you can just deter them. But you don't want to have to use this if you don't have to. The last one is going to be my favorite. All right, so this is a flashlight. The flashlight is great, especially if you get one of these really bright white lights, because at dark, when it's dark, if you shine this in their eyes, they are going to be momentarily blinded and you can run away. You don't even actually have to hit them. But if you have something like this, this is not a tactical flashlight. This is just an aluminum rechargeable flashlight. So it's not super heavy duty, but I can still hit with a good amount of force without having to worry about hitting myself. Cool part about this is it also has a little lip here, so I don't even have to worry about sliding. So I don't actually have to put my thumb here on the end of this. But again, one of the best parts about this is that I can just use this to blind my opponent and then I can run away. Or if they're still coming at me, I can use this sidestepping and then I can hit them. I can leave the light on when I'm, I don't have to worry about changing that, but I blind them with it and I can hit them or I can just leave. So again, same mechanics that we've learned with our hammerfish strikes, our ridge hand strikes can be applied using a force multiplier. Obviously these are things that you don't ever want to have to do, but if you are somebody that's smaller, like me, I am not the biggest person. If I was to get in a confrontation with somebody that's say 230 pounds and just looks like they live and sleep at the gym, I don't want to get hit by that person. Um, I'm going to use something like this. I'm going to blind them and I'm going to leave, right? So let's always try to think smarter. Uh, always, always do smarter, not harder. And right? we don't want to have to put ourselves in a bad situation. If we don't have to, if we can use something to help us win the situation, it's even better, right? So this, my favorite, because we can get out of there without having to even throw a punch or a hammer fist in this situation. But the other ones are good options for if you need to escalate the force, use a force multiplier, ideally not going lethal. You just, you don't want to go there, right? Just get out of there if you can. But those are some options on uh, something that you can use just for your own self-defense purposes.